Hello, everybody, and welcome into today's episode of the Top Cut Yu Gi Oh! podcast. My name is Sunny. Of course, I am here hosting with Caleb, your boy, as always. All righty. As always, you can find us on Twitter at Top Cut Podcast, as well as on Discord, which you can find the link to on our Twitter page. You can find me at Dat Chumley on Twitter. You can find Caleb at Jam the Man Seventeen. In addition, you can also find us on Patreon, where we're going to go ahead and read out the names of all of our patrons. This sounds a little bit different than it used to because we got several new patrons. So. Woo! Thank you. Huge thanks to Austin Johnson, Kane Martin, Mocha, Myth Oceanus, Pig, Scuzz Daddy, AD, Aaron Gardner, Anthony Leela, Damian Zink, Mountain Man, Owen Alvarado, Jeremy Drysdale, Ray Powell, and Sonny Sweet. Thank you all so, so much for your continued support. In addition to us having new patrons and us having a patron account we also just added a new tier on patreon so be sure to go check that out it is a little bit higher than our previous tiers that's there almost exclusively to get us to pasadena so, pretty much um speaking of new things we have also discovered a new review that we did not know that we had because Apparently, Apple Podcasts likes to split the reviews and ratings up between the different regions. Yep. So if you leave us a review and you're not in the United States, DM us and let us know. Because I did not know this was here until, like, today. We apologize to this individual. Yeah, we know it's a week late, but we're sorry. So, five-star review from Jam Pot Wayland from Australia. Incredible way to get back into the game is the title, which that's true. That's true. I've taken a year off over the pandemic and was looking for something to throw me back into the deep end of the game I love. Listening to your podcasts whilst at work has meant I've been able to catch up with the chaos that is this format. True. Thank you for bringing so much joy to the community. Your resident mind geist player. Only slightly joking. (laughs) <laughs> oh boy well a huge thank you to our resident mind geist player for con- your continued support also of the podcast and we encourage everyone to please 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 go ahead and leave us ratings and reviews on apple podcasts or whatever platform you're on if you're on a different platform than apple or spotify and you're leaving us ratings and reviews somewhere let us know because we haven't seen them because <laughs> We don't really don't check our analytics for places outside of Spotify and Apple because those are like 95 plus percent of our listens. So, but thank you, of course, everyone to your continued for your continued support. So, uh, I think we do have a few, we have a few things to talk about today, but the first thing I want to talk about is tournaments and tournament results. So, The first thing to talk about, if we're talking about tournaments and tournament results, is, of course, the, um, uh, what's it called? YCS Pasadena? Right. That's that's the one. The one that we're trying to go to. Yes. So, we do want to talk for just a moment about YCS Pasadena. So, we had mentioned before on the last episode that everybody should go ahead and sign up quickly. Yeah, pre-registration. Right. Very limited slots. We now know what number that what that number is. What the number was right. The number was two thousand, and it filled up in two hours on Thursday before we even got a chance to do the pod before the podcast episode even got a chance to release. So, for those that heard the podcast on Thursday or Friday or Saturday, and they were like, "Oh boy," and went to go sign up, and it was shut down already. Uh, I'm very sorry. We did not know that it was going to be limited to two thousand spots. I thought it was going to be like three or four thousand. I didn't think they were going to put a cap on it. So, so it goes well, to show yeah. what I know. Well, yeah, yeah. No, like, I figured if there was going to be a cap, there's only going to be three or 4,000, not two. Yeah, when you think about it, it actually kind of makes sense that they put a cap on it to begin with because realistically, it all, there's, it cannot, there's limited space in the event center. And then it also, and then there's also probably a cap on how many people that can even be, that can even be allowed in the building. Exactly. So I mean, it kind of puts a hard limit how many people are allowed in the building 
total. Right. Even if everybody there is vaccinated, which is required, mm-hmm. and all wearing masks, which is required, um, you still have, realistically, um, you still have to think about COVID. Yeah. So. But, yeah, oh yeah, no. Like I'm, pre- like I'm pretty sure that maybe they're limited to twenty five to three thousand, twenty five hundred to three thousand people total in the building. Right. So. Which, at a cap of, like, 2,000 players, that's actually very feasible. Because uh, you're going to have players who are coming, who are pre-registered and all that, in groups of, like, five or six. Who are all going to be in the tournament. Then, and then you're also going to have groups where it's, like, three or four people, and then one person who's not in the tournament. Like, what we're about to have to go do. Yeah, so... For context... We... Went, so, sign-ups happened. And... Caleb was not at home. He was out doing stuff, running errands. And he was like, that's all right. You know, I'll be home in a few hours and I'll just sign up when I get home. Got home. And guess what? Already it full. Was, it was completely full. All the Got way home full. a couple hours later, completely full. Yep. So what we are going to do is um, the plan is still for both of us to go. I got in. Uh, I was at work, and I said, uh, screw work and money. Yu-Gi-Oh is far more important. <laughs> so I stopped what I was doing at work, pulled over to the side of the road, because I'm a UPS driver. That's what I do. Uh, I pulled over to the side of the road, and I literally just stopped my truck, um, and I went ahead and signed up right then and there for the thing, because I was mainly out of sheer excitement. I wasn't worried about filling up. I was sheer excitement. Uh, me and several other friends all just pulled over and signed up. Well, little did we know that we were f- quickly filling up some of the two thousand available spots. Yeah. Again, didn't know there, didn't know that, didn't know that there was a cap. I fi- like I said, I, fi- I figured there was blah blah blah. Right. Um, In fact, it wasn't even that you said you were going to wait till you got home. You were having technical difficulties with the website. Yes, yes, I was having some issues with the website, and that for whatever reason, it just wasn't working right. And yeah. I think that might have just been to me being on mobile. Uh, didn't have that great of a signal, and then also so many people all trying to get on at the same time. Right. Uh, so I figured, hey, I'll just wait a couple hours, go home, do it on my computer, no big deal. Yeah, well. Um, now, one of our friends who had signed up to go didn't know when he signed up whether or not he was going to be able to go. He has since found out he won't be able to go. Right. So. So, for those that are close by, what I will say is. It's still worth the day trip. Yeah, if you're within like an hour or two and you can make it. Maybe even three or four hours. You think so? Maybe. It depends on what you would classify as a day trip. Right. Uh, For some people, any more than like an hour or two drive, not a day trip. Which, just to be fair, if you're in L.A., um, just getting across the city is an hour drive. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy to us because we go like halfway across the state in an hour. Oh yeah, we oh, you know we easily can. not We can leave the state in what hour and a half, hour and forty five. Uh, right at well, it's to leave the state to go to Texas is like right at an hour for us. Not even, but uh, from my house it is. From your yeah. house, it's a little bit less. It, yeah, it'd be like an hour and like like instead of an hour and twenty, it'll be like an hour and fifteen minutes. Whatever, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, like yeah, like again, it depends on what you think a uh day trip is from people it's an hour some people it's four depends on who you are right yeah like like so for if you're day tripping it like leaving your house going straight there having fun coming home it's still worth it even if you didn't get in the tournament because there's all these side events they're gonna have regionals there um, true true you know you know you know so you have all the regionals you have attack of the giant card yeah all kinds of others plus you can also just hang out and chat with some cool people like hopefully us yes so we are still going to go to the event. We're going to go. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're just... The goal is to have a good time. Mm-hmm. So... Maybe get some cool trading done. Get some cool cards. Right. And hopefully get to meet a bunch of cool people. Oh, yeah. Do some uh, elbow rubbing. Right. So... Figuratively. Huh. The goal is now... Go to the event. Have fun. Have a good time. Get to meet people. Uh, I will still be participating in the main event. Yeah, but I will try to. 
right key term try um because you know because they're, they're still going to be doing like oh hey this person didn't show up so their spot's open these people didn't show up so all their spots are open if you sign up right here right uh so hopefully i might be able to grab one of those slots i think you will we'll see yeah remains to be seen right <laughs> worst case i just do side events all day yeah yeah so i, I think it's still gonna be worth the trip for us um and also like i said since we're still trying to go anyway and we're still gonna pretty much make it our mission to go anyway we're still going to try to (laughs) we're gonna try to fit all of our equipment in our bags Mm -hmm. to go on the plane right so we're gonna try to figure out a way uh it's really easy actually it's just a couple of microphones and our Basically, our cards is the biggest thing we have to carry, so... Yeah, but, like, here, so here's the thing. I can fit literally all my cards, literally all my Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff, except my bulk. Right. Um, My Switch case, and, like, I can also stuff in a couple articles of clothing in my backpack. Right. And it'd still be within the dimensions, so then I have all that extra space in my... Carry-on. Carry-on. Right. Yeah. So it's entirely possible. Yeah, so we're gonna tr- we're still going to go to the event... We're still going to try to get recordings done. Uh, won't be edited and posted until we get home. Uh, right. So, yeah, so that week, going to have a late episode, unfortunately. Uh, that week, we're actually probably going to do... Um, yeah, because we're not going to get home from the event until Tuesday night. Yeah. And so nothing... In fact, oh yeah, we might not even get an episode up until Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, like Wednesday at the earliest, unfortunately, which is which I don't think people will mind, because then I think we're gonna have a long series of jam- of just two or three episodes that are just jam packed with stuff. Yeah, yeah, I I think we're gonna probably have like three or four, maybe five, even as many as five episodes like in a row, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, like we're yeah. gonna have several episodes in a row. Covering our experiences at the YCS, at oh, yeah. the main event, the um, side events. Yeah, then like any interviews everything. we're able to do with people. I know for a fact that there's some cool people going that I would really, really love to get interviews with. Okay. Even if it's just a quick, hey man, what do you think about this? Quick little five minute. Yeah, I would honestly, I would really love to just be able to, um, just to be able to catch a couple of people like if we can catch like not very good uh, live recordings, like just on our little cell phone microphone, just be like, Hey, so-and-so I happened to catch you right here at the event. What are you, what's going on? What are you playing today? How are you doing? You yeah. know? Yeah. How do you, so, how do you feel about the, some of the choices you've made with your deck building? Stuff like that. Yeah. Catch like random pro players. It'd be cool to catch somebody like pack. It'd be cool oh, to yeah. catch, uh, you know, like the higher well-known people, like the Farfas and MBTs of the world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll be able to get actual in-person interviews with some very cool people that we've met along the way. Mm-hmm. Giant Skyhawk, notably, is more than likely going to be going to the event and maybe even uh, splitting a hotel room. That would be cool. <laughs> so um, then you're, you'll have like the Don Juan will be at the event. Mm-hmm. No, 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 we're definitely going to meet up with him just to be like, hey. Yeah, also, he is uh, absolutely massive. I kind of want to arm wrestle him. <laughs> so You want to arm wrestle him, eh? <laughs> you know, I really do. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like the technique is there. He might have me in the <laughs> lift, but I feel like I can get him really. I, I feel like I can get him in the technique. You know, it's all in the shoulder, really. And I think I can. I, I think it's more in your elbow. What? No. Not the elbow. Because listen, if you got the elbow, you're going to win. <laughs> right. You just you just got to replace that, that crappy bone elbow and upgrade it. Come on. Android, let's go. That's it. Cyborg. Mechanical elbow is what I'm saying. Right, right. So Go on hydraulic press. <laughs> we are looking forward to the event. We will hopefully be at the event and in the meantime if you'd like to support us getting there again you can check that out on our patreon but that's enough about the ycs that's enough about the event let's go ahead and move on into some news and notes from around the game so first thing i want to talk about is we did get some supposed leaks from maximum gold so um this is coming from a spanish youtube channel who 
they opened two boxes and recorded it and scheduled the recording. And somehow the recording got leaked. So we have uh, images of some, it was like, it was like a Konami sponsorship Mm -hmm. with a Spanish YouTube channel and the sponsorship. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it got leaked. Neither does he. He's very upset about it, but we got like confirmed. I say confirmed, not confirmed by Konami, but more or less confirmed. Um, in infer- some some cards. Yeah, so we got this is like sixty ish, sixty sixty two, something like sixty seven, maybe. Yeah, out of a how many cards supposed to be in set? A hundred. A hundred and sixty two in maximum gold. Jesus. So this is this is potentially well under half of yeah. the reprints in the set. However, so. I'm kind of looking at this. What we I I assume this is just what they pulled. This is me. I'm thinking just based off of what we've seen, there's a lot more cards we can kind of, you know, go, yeah, it's probably going to be in there too. And we You'll also see what I mean. There's there's cards that are absolutely 100% confirmed to be in the set that are not here in the quote unquote leaks. Yes. So, which um, are some things like IP Mascarena, well, we IP know Mascarena, for a fact will be here. Well, IP Mascarena is in there, but it's got an actual alt art, but it doesn't have Nightmare Unicorn. And it also doesn't have um, Chamber Dragon Maid. Chamber Dragon Maid, right? Yeah. So um, those are all confirmed, but here's some of the things that got confirmed out of this particular league. Yeah. Red Eyes Black Dragon, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, Super Express Bullet Train, Danger Bigfoot is a big one, Vanity's Fiend. Uh, Destiny Hero Plasma, Alt right, Heart. Right. Uh, Soul Eating OV Raptor, so we have some of the Dino Engine in here, um, since Mist got it last time. They say that Black Dragon's in here. And if I would assume that if Black Dragon's here. White Dragon. Right. Um, uh, Eva here. Eva is here. One or two of the Altergeist cards are here. Uh, Roxy's, which suggests to me there's probably also going to be Fanzies, Dropsies, and Lampsies Potentially, because well. not only is Roxy's in here, but you also have a couple of the spell cards here in the league, as well as, I believe, the, uh, the Battle Butler and Weather Washer are both here in the yep. league. So, pretty much it looks like the entire Prank Kids core will be here. Yeah, which is cool. You uh, also have oh, Kagamucha uh, Knight, mm-hmm. Deep Sea Diva, Rescue Cat. Rescue Cat is a huge reprint, and it gets even better. It's an alt art. Yeah, I'm so and excited about that. It's adorable. Yeah, the alt art is it you, like you, crouching down yeah, with its like little the, whistle in its mouth. Yeah, with like in the cat, I'm a play position. Yeah, dude, it's awesome. Oh, Packy's in here. Yep. Uh, Pac- Fossil Dyna. Fossil Dyna, Packy Uh You have Psy Frame Gear Gamma. That is a huge reprint the rares on gamma were like six or seven bucks oh also there is a numeron wall yep it also looks as though the um oh microcoder it looks as though the uh and most of the eldritch core got in here because i see uh haqueros in here as well as scarlet sanguine eldritch or black awakening and cursed eldland it's probably everything not named uh the golden lord he might honestly be in here as a rare. Maybe. Uh, you also see. have Upstart Goblin, Pot of Extravagance with another printing, uh, Sinet Mi- Sign Mining, which really needed it. Yes. Uh, Sark. Gold Sark, yep. Uh, Numeron Calling. Twin Twister. Num- the Numeron Calling and Numeron Network are actually really solid reprints. Yeah, uh, let's see. Mis- Prank Kids. Mystic Animonium. Mine, as much as we all hate the card, needs another reprint. The Supers are like eight or nine bucks. Yeah. Um, um, another Pranks Kids card. Then we have all the... Trap Trick is in here, which is a cool reprint. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's then see. You have Numeronius as first printing. It's number C-1000, I think. No, no, C-100. No, it's 1000. Oh, I thought... Oh, Numeronius Dragon. Yeah, no, not not yeah. number 100 Numeron Dragon. It's Numeronius. Yeah, it's yeah. some. It's one of the number lore monsters. Uh, it can get, like, really big, basically. yeah. yeah. And it's also got, uh, it's only got one printing even in the OCG. They just yeah. got it in the complete number file. Okay. Which okay, has like that, every that's... number monster. Okay, that, that's our printing of that. Yeah. Uh, so, Cyframe or Mega is in mm-hmm. here. Gusoff Max and Lieb. Yeah, those are really good reprints. Um, they also have number one, uh, Numeron Gate. Which, so, if they have the other Numeron spell cards. I would imagine they also have all the rest right. of them. Uh, Xcode Talkers in here, that's cool. Here's an awesome, awesome, awesome reprint that's in here. That probably got overlooked by a lot of people. Psyframe Lambda. Mm-hmm. That and is, Omega. That's still like a $20 card. Psyframe Lambda and Omega. Right. Um, Scrap Wyvern, Code Talker. And Scrap Dragon, too. Mm-hmm. Black uh, Rose, Babuska. 
uh, Cyframe Lord Zeta for whatever reason. Yep. Uh, some of the Weather Painter cards got in here. Mm-hmm. You have a uh, Prime Math Mac, the Rank Four Math Mac guy. Mm-hmm. I don't remember his name. Uh, all four of the of the uh, Link Charmers. Yes, which is awesome. Uh, X Code Talker is here, as well as uh, I forget what that Code Talker is called. Code Talker Inverted, I think. Yeah, that one is also in here, but there's another one that I can't. Something starts with an S, like Spirit Code Talker or something. Yeah, I, I can't really see it on. I got it real bad. It's really yeah. pixely up for me. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can, can zoom way in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Weather Painter Canvas is here. Prank Kids Pranks and Prank Kids Pandemonium. Those are the two that I was thinking. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, like just those by themselves. Like to me, Alter Guys, Mel you seek and Marionette are, yeah. are here. Like I mean, like Actually, just all of them are here. But like just two or three of those cards by themselves are mm-hmm. real nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of what we've seen so far, and this is not even half the set. Yeah. Now, this is coming from a fairly reliable source compared to the next little bit of El Dorado, which is a single card that the rumor come out only. Um, it's still not confirmed. It's, or... ex- it's less than confirmed. It's not even... It's not even like a f- leak or anything. It's just somebody showing off a picture. It's not even that. It's not even shown off a picture. It's There was a picture on a computer screen very obscure shown kind of in the background of another picture and that's red eyes dark dragoon it was i have the gold border yeah yeah it was literally just dragoon with a gold border um nothing's confirmed about that it doesn't look legit or good or real but because um, it's on a computer but that could also just mm, i mean there, there's a lot that could be but I'm thinking it was just somebody messing around with, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh card creator thing. It, it, they could literally just have made it look like that in Photoshop and then took a really obscure picture to kind of... make Give it some... Right. Or, yeah, uh, some... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To make it look real. Right. Um. Well, so, it looks real, all right, but, but we don't know that for sure. Yeah, well, take that with a grain of salt. You know what? No, take that with an entire salt shaker. Take the first, all the other cards we talk about with a grain of salt. This with a salt shaker. The whole shaker. Yeah. Um, there are a couple other cards that are very rumored to be here. But, uh, yeah, there's nothing confirmed. But we've heard very strong potential rumors of Verte Anaconda also being in here. As well as, um, oh gosh. What's the name of the uh, Verte Anaconda? And there was another one. Oh, Access Code. Yeah. So we have some pretty. In- not including the meme. Yes. Yeah, this is not. Which like... I think is hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, the meme is awesome. So. You gotta be kind of wary with these. We don't know for sure that Access Code's gonna be here. It'd be great uh, if it was. Yeah, but we don't know. Yeah, doesn't doesn't mean it will. Um, but yeah, I mean that's about all we got for El Dorado at the moment. Yeah, I'm showing Caleb the picture. Yeah, it it looks pretty good. Hold on, I'm gonna get a little bit closer. I can get a better look. That's what that noise is. Are that is it? Straight up in MS Paint. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, like the picture is just straight up open in MS Paint. <laughs> yeah, and it's ex- extremely obscure. And um, on Tatsum's computer screen, so we don't know. We don't know, but uh, technically, take, it's possible. Take with it. Take, like I said, take with it. Take less with than entire, a grain of salt. Yeah, l- more than a grain of salt. The entire salt mine, if you will. Yeah. So uh, that's about it for El Dorado that we got right this second. There might be more after this goes live. Who knows? I would I would like to know, but I'm not a mo- I'm not a fortune teller and can't see the future yet. Right. Yeah. Or so, have a time machine yet. Um, that's about all we have as far as the Eldorado Ma- Max Gold Eldorado. So let's continue with reprint sets and talk about the next reprint set. Right, so we did get a little bit more information today on Ghosts from the Past 2022. A.K.A. Ghosts from the Past 2, Electric Boogaloo. Right. 
or goes from the past two 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 because there's lots of twos in this. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> I, d- did you read the uh, the article title? Konami's ghosting us. No, 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 no. The oh, ar- the URL. Yeah, hold on, it's great. Oh, I heard you like ghosts, so I put ghosts in your ghost, so you can ghost while you ghost. It's great. That's awesome. Uh, and then, like, the first line is Konami's ghosting us. Yeah. It's amazing. <clears throat> Arriving April 24th, 2022, the 2022 Ghost from the Past, MSRP 1999, is following last spring's phenomenon, Ghost from the Past, with everything that made Ghost from the Past a smash hit, including even more ghost rares. I'm sorry, I can't, I, I can't. I gotta take a second to laugh. That's hilarious. Phenomena. Smash hit. Yeah. I mean, it sold a lot, but not because it was so good. Yeah. <clears throat> the 2022 Ghost in the Past card pack includes five Ultras, one of which can be replaced by Ghost Rare. Plus, each box contains four packs, 20 cards per box. Uh, and then some quotes. The second Ghost in the Past set is releasing April 20, 2022. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, including more ghost rares. It's not just the roster of ghost rares that expanded either. The drop rate has two. So it's twice as easy to pull a ghost rare this time around. On top of that, each box of the next Ghost from the Past set has four packs instead of three. For even more cards per box. <clears throat> the 2022 version of Ghost from the Past is another all foil set. Each five card pack comes with five ultras, one of which could be a ghost. Each box comes with four packs for a total of 20. Name and content subject to change. So, very notably, they upped the numbers in every way. So, you're you getting get, more packs, which means more, ch- which gives you a full, per box, a full extra chance um, at a ghost rare. Not only does it give you a full extra chance at a ghost rare per box, because you get four packs now instead of three. They also doubled the uh, the rate the rate at which a ghost rare is in a box. Right. And they also increased the amount of ghost rares, which... In this situation, is if you're looking for a singular specific ghost rare, is a bad thing. Because it makes it a little bit harder to get with the exact one you want. Yeah, but if you're just looking for any ghost rare at all, it's great. Cause, yes. Because the amount of ghost rare doesn't matter if it's just, oh, one in, you know. Do you have any cards in particular that you would like to see as a ghost rare? Um, ooh, that's a good one. If I had to say a card, it would probably actually be a ghost rare Zeus, I think, would look really cool. I have a really oh dude, a Ghost Rare Zeus would look amazing. I know. Ghost Rare Zeus, Ghost Rare Access Code would look really good. They've got it him in the would. OCG. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. He does look really cool. Ghost Rare Nib would look really cool. Uh, I've got a very unconventional choice though. What's that? That I think would look amazing. Ghost Rare Altar Karibo. No. <laughs> Although also yes. Ghostware Lancia. Ooh, that would look cool. So think about this. Think about the way the artwork on Lancia is. How it's like a dude standing there holding a lance out at you. That 3D effect yeah, that you could the give ghost it. Ghostwares. Ooh, yeah, that look really cool. Ghostwares always look better when you can give them a 3D effect and give the yeah. artwork some real depth. Uh, yeah, and, and Lancia's depth, like the and well, most a good chunk of the uh, artifact monsters have that but lancia in particular because he's pointing himself at you because right the monster is the is the thing weapon being held not the not the person dude. holding it but yeah that's just a spirit that it projects a hard light hologram if you would that, that it projects to so you know it can so the sword can stab right so the sentient sword can stab well lance in this case <laughs> so, so uh, but yeah no that looks sweet with the nice 3d texturing Ooh. Yeah, Oof. it's gonna look awesome. It would, uh, but yeah, like I said, the Zeus would also look super cool for all, actually the exact same reason, uh, because of how it's kind of a more three D thing. Because Zeus has this real action pose where, um, yes, yeah, it's like action poses look great in Ghost. Yeah, so if you think about some of the ghosts in the past <laughs> that have also looked good, um, like. I remember, um, like, Leviathan Dragon kind of, like, looks like he's almost flapping his wings as oh, a yeah, ghost yeah, rare. He yeah. looks awesome. Oh, so. yeah. Uh, 
I'm trying to remember the name of. I'm trying to remember Solemn what, Judgment as a ghost rare, by the way. Even though it's the gold ghost, Solemn Judgment looks, looks awesome because he's holding his hand out. Yeah. Uh, no, like I'm trying. There was a there was an old synchro mod, ghost rare red dragon arch feigned. All the, all of the signer dragons are awesome. Um, Stardust Dragon less only because his artwork is naturally a little bit flatter, right? Than Red Dragon Archfiend. Because so Red Dragon Archfiend, you know, has has like that fist up, it like right in front of him compared to Stardust, where he's kind of just kind of dangling there. You know right, what I mean? Comparatively, right. don't get me wrong. Star Ghost for Stardust still looks great, but compared to like Red Dragon Archfiend or Power Tool. Yeah, not quite, not quite the same. Yeah, um, again, the more the more movement and the, the more dynamic they look, the better. That's right the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. The more dynamic the the uh, artwork, the better it's going to look in Ghost because that three D effect. Correct. So I think we've rambled on about Ghosts enough, though. Oh, it's the Golden Lord. That's my last. Oh, that's also a good one because it's holding his arms out. That yeah, 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 and that yeah, yeah, and that come hither pose. Yeah. So, uh, Ghosts from the Past, very exciting, very cool. Yep. Um, Hopefully. Next, the next thing to talk about. So we decided we have made the conscious decision that we will start covering speed duel news in the podcast. Besides just, oh, this cool thing's about to get released for speed duels. Right. So we talked a little bit about the Battle City box when it got announced. Because that's really cool. I right. want that product. Yeah. And we I are. I play speed duels. But yet. we're. Yeah, exactly. So we're considering getting into the Speed Duels game. So we wanted to take a little bit of time to kind of, um, if we're going to, it's a TCG, actual playable TCG game. And, you know, the uh, prize support for it is amazing. Yes. So with that being said, and there will be Speed Duel events both at YCS's and Extravaganza's and at the main YCS event in Pasadena. So mm -hmm. this is a actually supported and playable format. So Oh yeah, oh yeah, no. It's it's got lots of support. Yes. A lot more than a traditional. Blech. Yeah. So there are some notable things happening in Speed Duels. They are getting ready for the release of the Battle City box. And the first thing they're doing is errating three skills and updating the rules surrounding them. No, with the update, with the rules, it's mostly just clarification on some things that weren't very clear. And the erratas are huge nerfs so, because so they like, don't actually have, like, a ban list for the skill cards. That's fair. I mean, because why would you just ban a skill? Because you're only allowed one, because that's the only way they can go, because you only have one. And in, and most of them are once per duel. Yeah. So, okay, so to start with, uh, Cocoon of Ultra Evolution. Right. I'm going to, if it's okay, I've already actually got it pulled up. Um. I have oh, okay. You also have a pull. Yeah, up. I also okay. have a pull. I was up. gonna read the original text and then the updated text. Do you want to do one and I'll do the other? Okay, yeah, I'll start with the previous text. Okay, so the previous text text was you do do the first effect, then I'll do the first effect, then you do two because it's got two effects. Okay, uh, so the so the previous text was activate the following skills during your main phase. You can either tribute an you can tribute an insect monster from either field to equip an equip card, and if you do, special summon an insect monster from your deck, ignoring summon is conditions. Also, flip this card over. Or you can shuffle one insect monster from your graveyard into the deck, then draw one card. Also flip this card over. Okay, well, you read them both anyway. Yeah. So, Oh, I, I didn't see the line. My bad. Okay, it's all right. So the updated text is activate one of the following skills during your main phase, but each can only be used once per duel. So that is in line with kind of the established, the newly established rules on these, which yeah. we'll get into. You can tribute one insect monster from either field equipped with an equipped card. And if you do, special summon one insect type monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. You cannot normal or special summon other monsters the turn you activate this skill. Also flip this card over. So they added in that you cannot normal or special summon monsters the turn you activate it. Huge nerf. And the second part is exactly the same. You can shuffle one insect monster from your graveyard into the deck, then draw one card. And then flip this card over. So, yeah, major nerf for sure. Uh, next up is Inner Conflict, which is a Mokuba skill. Yes. Well, Yami Mokuba. Um, previous text: Activate the skill during your main phase once per duel. Not Mokuba, Bakura. Bakura. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was looking at. I was like, 
That does not seem like Mo Koopa. I'm Who sorry. I, that's, I'm that's tired. Uh, previous text, blah, blah, blah. Once per duel, pay half your life points. Take control of take control of one monster opponent controls to the end phase, but it cannot attack directly this turn. So the updated text is once per duel during your main phase, you can pay 2000 life points and take control of one monster your opponent controls that can be normal summon slash set until the end phase, but it cannot attack directly or be tributed this turn. So it co- changes a couple of key things. Keep in mind. In speed duels, you only have, I think you only have 4,000 life points. Yeah, so the fact that it does 2,000 and not half is huge. Right, because it makes it much more of an early game card. Yeah, and then like, even if you, like, and then like as soon as you take 2,100 damage, it's done. You can't activate it. Correct. And then, the monster you take has to be normal summoned or set. Like, normal which, summoned or settable. Which means no extra deck monsters and a good and there's a good chunk of boss monsters in the game. Yes, that also cannot be normal summon or set that aren't that are in the main deck. Yes, and it can't be tributed, so you can't use it to clear whatever you want. Exactly. Interesting. And also, like and like they said, it also cannot attack directly. Yes. So then we have the Yummy up- Merrick Twisted Personality. Correct. So uh, you do the previous text. I'll do the updated. Okay. Each time a player loses life points, place one counter on this card, max three. Once per turn, during your main phase, you can use one of the following skills. Remove two counters to discard a random card from your opponent's hand, or remove three counters to destroy one face-up card your opponent controls. Okay, so, the errata here is in the first, like, five words of this card. The updated text says, each time you lose life points. Before, it was each time a player loses life points. Meaning that if you're just sitting there beating your opponent in the face with low attack point monsters, let's say for the sake of argument, um, it causes it to snowball. Yes. So. The errata makes it where you have to be the one who's behind. Yes. So. Um, each of these three skills will be reprinted in Speed Duel Tournament Pack 3, set for release in March 2022. Along with this, there's a really good detailed guide for how skills work in Speed Duel. So... We're going to read through this one by one to make sure that people understand and know exactly what's happening here because we know that a majority of our listener base does not do anything with speed duels and we understand that. So we're yet. just going to take a yet. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to take a quick second just to talk about how skill cards work. So the first rule, you are not required to use skill cards, but if you do, you choose exactly one before each duel. At the start of the duel, you place that one skill card face down next to your field zone or extra deck unless the skill card instructs you to do something else with it. Example, it's a Toon World tells you to place it in your center spell and trap card zone and then flip it over at the start of the duel. Right. Uh, three, if a skill says that it's a certain type of card in its type line, like continuous spell or continuous trap, then after the duel begins, it's always that type of card and follows all the rules for that type instead of the rules for skill cards because skill cards are not spells they're not traps they're those own separate things so if it says on the skill that it is this that's what it is during the duel you can activate your skill card by flipping it face up if your skill card tells you when you can activate it then you only activate it at the time when there is no chain being built or resolved if your skill card doesn't say when you can activate it, then you can only activate it during your main phase when there is no chain being built or resolved. For more information on how to determine when a game is or isn't in an open game state, click here, blah, blah, blah. Right. So basically, it's either a quick play spell with certain conditions that need to be met before you can flip it, or you just flip it as a normal spell card where you have to just play it. Right. Um, the magic version of this would be instant and sorcery speed. Yes. So, yeah. Activating a skill or skill card does not start a chain and is not a card effect. Cards or effects cannot be activated in response to the activation of a skill. However, cards and effects can be activated after a skill has resolved as appropriate. Example If Cocoon of Ultra Evolution special summons a monster, then after that monster is summoned, players can activate cards and effects just like any other time a monster is summoned. So cards like Floodgate Trap Hole or Adhesion Trap Hole can be activated. 
So basically what this means is the activation and resolution of a skill card is similar to an inherent summon in uh, advanced. Yeah. There, it does not start a chain, so there's no opportunity to react to it. Even if you have a counter trap or whatever, you cannot negate the activation or respond to the activation of them. Cool. They're meant to be powerful game swinging cards. It, yeah, that's the whole point behind them. That's why they exist in rush and not rush duels, speed duels. Think think of them similar to a commander in Magic, in that you always have access to this card. It's meant to be good yeah. and guide it, your it's game. It's basically always in your hand. Mm-hmm. Um. Lastly, the skill on your skill card may only be activated once per duel, unless it has specific instructions otherwise, or flips itself face down. If it does, follow the instructions on your skill card. So basically, if your skill card is so basically what, you, so like let's say like with the cocoon of ultra, uh, the cocoon of ultra evolution, if you want, let's say you have your opponent's monster equipped with parasite parakid, parasite parasite paranoid, parasite, Par- no paranoid, sure. Your opponent has an has an insect monster with an equip card equipped to it. You would activate the Cocoon of Ultra Evolution by flipping it face up. That's all you would do. Flip face up. Boom. Go through its effects, and then it tells you to put it back face down. Meaning, right. next turn, you can activate it again. Um, If it didn't have the text where you can't. Because I think Cocoon of Ultra Evolution specifically states you can only use each effect once per duel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you could do that once, and then it, the reason why it puts it back face down is because then you can flip it to face up again to get the other effect later. Yes. Um, let's see, and then the Merrick one is just always face up because it's a uh, sitting there gaining counters. Uh, it's a Toon World is very specific where it's in the middle. What it its thing is when you activate it, it's Toon World. Oh, okay. Well, I mean that, that, that makes sense. That's what it's a Toon World is. You can start the you start the duel with Toon World on the field already. As a matter of fact, I think a vast majority of the, a lot of the like super early game, like the super early <clears throat> uh, skills, was just you start the game with this field spell activated. Yeah, yeah, but they've since you know expanded like uh, Destiny Draw. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anyway, but that's you know neither here nor there. Um, all of this is great, great, is great for people who are just trying, who, you know, who are like kind of on the, on the fence because they didn't know how skills worked and it is, and it isn't, it wasn't explained very well. Right. Uh, in a lot of the rule books from what I, from what I was told. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I don't have a ton of, um, information about them. Uh, it's something that I'm probably hoping to get a little bit more information about. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we might hopefully try to get one or two people on to very specifically talk about about speed duels. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. it's cool, it's an interesting format, and I would love, 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 love to try and promote it a little bit more and yeah. hopefully try to get into the format a little more. So... And like one of my like one of the things I really enjoy about it though is that you're going to end up using cards you wouldn't normally use because the skills make certain strategies that before were not viable all of a sudden viable again exactly uh, so. a great example is actually tunes because one of their business b- weaknesses was they have to have tune world on the field to do anything not just tunes and tune world but my favorite strategy that's extremely playable <clears throat> in speed duels and not even remotely playable at any point in its history is the xyz strategy like not oh. xyz but like xyz dragon. xyz dragon catapult cannon not even that just yeah, xyz, XYZ dragon or X, XYZ Dragon Cannon, yeah. Yeah. But that I understand ABC was very playable and was a but, great deck. But not XYZ dra- like the Kaiba XYZ Dragon Cannon. Right, exactly. Yeah. So Which again, because of the skill system, was playable. Exactly. So I love the idea of some of the things that are do possible and And another cool thing is they're going to be using a lot of cards you wouldn't normally see. Right. So you get to see artwork you wouldn't normally see. Which yeah, is cool. for sure. So be sure to check out Speed Duels. Be sure to check out the upcoming GX Battle City box. It will be releasing in January. It is, in my opinion, well worth the time investment. Actually, I think that releases right before YCS Pasadena. Or right after. Oh, right after? Dang, that would have been so cool. Yeah, I think Pasadena is the 15th, 16th, and I think it releases around the 28th. Dang, that would have been super cool. It would have been. And I, I'm personally really looking forward to it. I think I'm going to buy the singles and I might build my, myself a deck soon. Yeah, yeah, I probably will too because singles are dirt cheap. 
Depends on the singles. Fair, but I mean, but like I mean, like the Decoichis are I want to say fifteen dollars a piece. Yeah, but that's for like goat format, and I don't think Rushdoll uh, uses Speed Duel uses a lot of Decoichi. I don't know for sure. I though. don't think it does either. But it's it's principle that there are expensive cards. Yeah, there that that is the principle. Yes, that that is so. Fair. Uh, but be sure to check it out if you want to see some deck lists. I know that MBT does do some Speed Duel stuff on his channel. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you can always, if you just go on YouTube and type in Speed Duel deck lists, you'll find plenty. Yeah, for sure. So uh, and if you watch enough of them, you'll kind of figure out, okay, this guy kind of knows what he's talking about. This dude has no idea what he's talking about. You can yeah. kind of start piecing And MBT together. has a Speed Lords podcast that he does. Which is all about Speed Duels, I assume. Yes. Based on the name. And it is not very often that he does it. He he just uploaded his first episode of it about a month or a month and a half ago. Maybe, might even be close to two at this point. But I think it was about a month and a half ago. He uploaded his first episode since before COVID. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, there's also hasn't been a whole lot of Speed Duel stuff going on. True. Because, yeah. But, that's okay. We'll get into it. Uh, and we will enjoy every format that we can. Oh, yeah, boy. So, we do want to move from here a little bit into something else that we did. Uh, over the weekend, we had a case tournament slash trophy tournament slash, slash pre-release. Pre yeah, for Bode. For Burst of Destiny at our local, well... Our other locals up in Shreveport, Louisiana. So we went up to Steel Fox Games in Shreveport. Shout out to Bo and Steel Fox and the whole crew up there. It's a great, great environment. Um, we went up for, like we said, the pre-release event. We played for our trophies. And uh, I'll let you say first how your event went. As far as the actual tournament itself, I'm just not going to talk about it. I think everybody remembers my meltdown. After the last time, the Dawn of Majesty sneak peek event, I went to that one. I know you didn't get to go. You had stuff going on. Mm -hmm. But I went to the Dawn of Majesty sneak peek, and I did horrible. Uh, I went 2-3-1. Hey, wow, that sounds familiar. Which I believe was also the exact same record you had, right? Yep. I had enough bricks to build a house. Well, I went from 2-3-1 at the Dawn of Majesty event to Five in one at this event through Swiss. Woo. To be fair, the deck I built, I built two weeks ago. And I've barely had time to play any Yu-Gi-Oh since, since I built it. That's very fair. I have been playing my deck seemingly nonstop for like almost a year now. Yeah. So um, I if any, I should by now know the lines of play of my deck. Yeah. Um. So... There were one or two hands that afterward, I was like, okay, I could have done that better. Yeah. But the times when that happened, I still won. Yeah, it doesn't help you, though, when you do that, and then you just lose. Yeah. Uh, particularly whenever I open, you know, like, two Pot of Desires. Uh, the well, why don't, why, don't we, why don't we go round by round? That way we can kind of, like, talk out how each round went for us. Okay, fair enough. So how, how what was round one for you? Do you remember? Yes, it was... Pure, um, rise. I was about to say it. Pew! Yeah, yeah. I was talking about it earlier today with some Dragoonity. friends. Pure oh. dragoonity. Oh, yeah. So I, so I go first. I opened. Um, because I'm I, already... the only thing the main the main thing I remember about round one, by the way, is that uh, just a sneak peek into how this went. Uh, I. I was sitting at my table finishing my match, and Caleb walked up, and there were still 25 minutes left in the round. And Caleb, I looked at Caleb, and he gave me a thumbs up, and I was like, "Woo!" So, so I go <laughs> first. Yeah, no, no, that's cool. So I go first. I, I win the die roll. I'm like, cool. And I, and I, oh, the first two cards that I draw are Fractal, Cobalt, Sparrow, full combo, Turquoise Warbler. You mean? Yeah, Turquoise Warbler. Thank you. Full combo. Uh, I'm playing Travigar Lyrilisk. I don't. I at the time I didn't have any of the other the new Lyrilisk stuff from Synchro Storm. So right. I had yet to be able to find any of it. So, and I'm like, great. Uh, and like Effect Veiler, Pot of Desires, Ash Blossom. So I'm like, this is great. So my ending board is a Three Negate Apo and a Samorg. You cannot ask for better than that. Yeah, and uh, and I also have an Impermanent Hand because I also got a. 
No, 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 I don't have an Air Brum. I got a Bear Brum off, too. Mm-hmm. So I also have the... I put the Desires back so I could keep the Revolt. So I had a set Revolt, too. Oh, man. In phase, brought the Barry Statue. I'm like, all right, I got this. This dude's living the dream. I'm like, all right, I got this. Uninterrupted. There's nothing he can do. He activates the Dragoon. He spells out the Special Summon a Winged Beast and a Dragon from his deck. And I went, oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, uh, no. I'm in danger. Oh, no, my Barry Statue. They're all wind. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm in danger all over. So he starts trying to do... I ash, and he keeps trying to do stuff. And the part that tipped me off that he's new was that he had a dragon on board, and he attempted to banish it to special summon Red MD. Oh. And I had Barrier Statue, and I was like, you can't. Well, why? Because it's Barrier Statue. Also, that's a winged beast. <laughs> yeah. He tried to banish, like, Legatus to special I was like, can't, because it was winged beast. He's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Do 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 do, keep going, keep going. Uh, try to banish a dragon, summon the Red MD, bury a statue. Yep, you can't special summon non win. He's like, oh, I can't out this board then. Um, scoop game two, over in like three, over in like five five minutes. Yeah. Uh, he goes first. Um, I open nothing but hand traps. Oh boy. But the thing is, I only opened one ash. The rest of them weren't weren't once per turn. Oh. And I was like, well, no, neither ones are going to get to do anything. So I stop his entire board. Right. He ends with, like, um, uh, I think a brand of stock, and that's about it. Yeah. Drop for turn. Fractal. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. No, Sorry, no, 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 no. My drop for turn was Desires. I activated Desires. I drew Fractal and... For another name. No, what a name. It was one of the Lyralisks. I yeah, was like, it fine. doesn't matter. I have Fractal plus another Lyralisk that wasn't Turquoise Warbler. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, round one for me, I played against pure Lyralesk. Uh, so <laughs> this game was kind of funny. Uh, game one, I went first and I opened IO, uh, and that's all that there is to that one. Uh, game yep. two, uh, that was actually, I played actually against Patty who has come on the podcast a couple of times. Super cool before. dude. Yeah. So, uh, shout out to top tier gaming on YouTube. Check them out. I played, I could play against Patty. I opened IO game one. So we go to game two. He... He goes first. He does some stuff. I don't really have any interruptions. I play into his board, trying to do what I can. And we do you be- happen to remember what his board was? I don't. I don't. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Continue. Uh, I think it was a. I think it was you. Topic F zero. Ooh. So that's rough, buddy. <laughs> yeah, and some other stuff. So. I play into it the best I can. I kind of try to like out or clear his board as best I can. And then game, it doesn't really work out. He goes into an assembled Nightingale with six materials. And boop, 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 hits me six times. And we count it up and like, okay, cool. That's 7,200 damage. He didn't OTK me. And then we go through like <laughs> three more turns, like seven or eight more minutes into this game. And then they realize. And then I we realize. And we're telling him this. That uh, he had a Barrel Canary on that Assembled Nightingale. For those who don't know, Barrel Canary gives the Exceed Monster an extra 200 attack points. Right. Meaning he dealt the extra 1,200. He dealt he dealt 1,200 more, which is game. Yeah, so... It's ba- for it, it's, an, it's an adi- a full additional material. Yeah, so we go and we... We like... We're like, oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's... Seven minutes later. Yeah, so we're like, all right, we have like seven or eight minutes left in the round. Let's just go ahead and hurry up and move into game three. So we're going to game three. I felt kind of bad because he's turbo tilted. Between not realizing one of the effects of his monsters and the IO, he's on tilt. I can tell um, he's very upset. And we... To be fair, I would be too. Yeah, Patty's a very efficient and very confident player. So... um, (laughs) Yeah, we go into game three with just about five minutes left. I go first. He's just got no interruptions, and I just go full board. Uh, Oof. Yeah, like three or four to get Apolusa, plus I, I hard drew Revolt. Ooh. And I ha- I was able to put out the double Dragon Lords for a bounce, too. Uh, it, was, it was a lot. That's rough. Yeah, I, I opened the nuts, and then I also had... A cross out for the he had one hand trap and I had the cross out. I mean I had just I had everything. So um round two I played against 
uh, like Goki, which it was really less Goki and more just Esold Warrior Turbo. I played against him round three. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. So you won round two also? No. That was my draw. Oh, you had a draw round two. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, I'll finish mine, and then we can talk about your draw. Yeah. So I start off, and I go into... He starts off his turn. He goes into Isold, and I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. <clears throat> so I immediately... I imperm the Isold. Well, for those that don't know, Isold has two effects, and they're both a hard once per turn, but there's like a separate hard ones per turn. It's two different effects. So if he activates and resolves the first effect, which happens on summon, it searches a warrior, you, it, mm, how do I say this? The first effect happens on summon, and the second effect is an ignition effect that he chooses to activate. So what most people do is they let the first effect resolve for the search. And then when they go to activate the second effect, that's when they hit the hit it with the imperm or the or the uh, effect veiler. I because I impermed the first effect, he had an extender in hand, extended into a second, put another monster on board, and was able to link off Isold and the other warrior into a second Isold. Cause you can do that. And then proceeded to activate the second effect of Isold, and just was able to put out enough for a Dragoon. And my opening hand was like, Karis, Karis, and a Rescue Cat, and a couple other things. And the Rescue Cat's just, it's not, it's not stay on the board with the Dragoon up. No, like, uh, like at that point, all you can really do is pitch a Karis, special Karis, try to bait the negate on active, I mean, you can't even do that, because you'd also have to have a Fractal, and then try and bait the... It's difficult. Yeah, it's I normal summoned things, Rescue yeah. Cat, activated Rescue Cat, he negated. I went Karis, I pitched Karis to activate Karis, uh, activate Karis on field, summon, uh, I banished the cat and the Karis from my graveyard to do a Link 2. I make Bear Brum. I link off the Karis and the Bear Brum to make a... Rugal the Silver Sheller, I search Revolt. Uh, I set Revolt, and I think I had a Psalm Strike. And I pass, and I struck the Dragoon when he activated his Negate on the Dragoon, but it, does, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, he activated his Dragoon effect, I saw him strike. Better to take 1,500 damage than 2,300, so. Yeah, definitely. But, so he gets me game one. Game two, I go full combo, and he just kind of can't play. I have multi-Negate Opelousa, Revolt, he can't play. Uh, and yeah. Game three, he went first, and I have the effect veiler for the Esold, but I'm going to be honest, at this point, all I saw was one Goki monster, because I saw a Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine as his warrior mm -hmm. extender in game one, and game two, I didn't see any warriors, because he literally didn't even get to play, so I didn't see any other Goki cards, so I thought maybe he was just playing some kind of weird warrior turbo Aurora on Hauki Fibrax combo. I I really thought it was some kind of Hauki Fibrax Aurora on combo deck, some he kind just, of Infernoble thing. Yeah, and then he just didn't kind of do that combo line because he didn't have a chance to. Right. Well, this game he goes full combo. He summons the Esold. I have Effect Veiler in hand. I let the Esold go. I let him resolve both effects if he sold because in my mind, I was like, okay, well, if he's got an Aurora on, I'm just gonna wait for the Aurora on, and it's gonna. It's just going to end his whole career. Uh, he never made a Roradon. Right after he made the Esol and resolved the Esol, he went up into a three to get Opelousa. Yep. And I was just like, well, dang it. So it didn't go well from there. He ended on Opelousa, Dragoon, Abyss Dweller, and I could not play the game. So, yeah. How do you round two go? So I was up against Invoked Dogmatica. No shit all. Oh, this was a listener duel. Yeah. Well, he had a Shadal package, but it was the Schism and then the extra deck ones. Right. Schism, App, Cologne, Construct, probably, and Winda. Yeah. Um, Game one went by pretty quickly. I won. No, I lost the die roll. I had exactly the hand traps I needed to stop him. I made my board 
uh, and OTK. I didn't OTK, but I got real close to Simul Nightingale, main phase two. Yeah. Made the zoo. Made a, uh, what was it? One, two, three, four stack Zeus. Yes. Um, because it was a three material, uh, Simul Nightingale, blah, 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 Zeus on top. Cool. Everything's great. Uh, game two starts. Uh, he goes first. He, um, I don't remember exactly what he did, but he, I, again, I was able to stop him. Right. But, I, uh, but the thing that bugged me was I only needed, I only, he literally activated Nadir Ash. Mm-hmm. That was it. Yeah. He said, he said two back row, passed. Hmm. And I went, there's gotta be more to this. Draw for turn. He can, I don't remember what the two cards were, but he stopped me from making a board. And... We it were turned in, into a very slow grindy game. A very simplified game state. And we were sitting there grinding and grinding. Neither one of us was able to get a single hit on the other. Um, and it went into time. But he earlier on in the game, he was able to actually punch me. So it was this game one? Game two. Oh. Game one was over in like ten minutes. Game two lasted the rest all the way into time. And he, at some point he's able to punch me once. And I was never able to stick in a symbol nightingale to just attack direct. Gotcha. So he had the life point advantage in game two. When the when the when time was called, he won game two and therefore it became a tie. Correct. Gotcha. Still, that was actually one of the most fun games I had that day. Shout out to Farah and Myth, who we both met at the tournament. Super cool dudes. Great, great meeting y'all. Um we're going to go ahead and go into round three after we do a very quick ad break that we forgot to do earlier. Oh, no. Yes. ETB. Great people. Yes. Shout out to ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana. That is our actual locals that we try to go to as often as we can. Uh, just because we went to a case tournament somewhere else does not mean that they are our locals. ETB is still our locals. They are still our favorite shop in the area. It is home to us. So for those wanting to... Uh, check it out. Be sure to check out ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana. Huge shout out to them for sponsoring the podcast and help Being making to be the our dream a thing. Sponsor and our continued sponsor for the foreseeable future. Right. So please, 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 please come out to our ETB Battle City Days when those are happening. If you're in the area, please, 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 please be sure to uh, show your support to the webs to them by buying things through their website and through their TCG player. And be sure to let us know what you think about ETB if you ever do any business with them, because we would love to check it out. We will be sure to announce the date of the next Battle City Day. As soon as we know. As soon as we know it. Hopefully it won't be too far out, because I think the month of November is kind of rough because of like Thanksgiving yeah. and other stuff happening. So we will be sure to get that information to you as soon as possible. But again... Huge shout out to ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana. So we're going to go kind of turbo speed here through the rest of the tournament because yeah, yeah. we're running up on our time limit. Yeah. But how did round three go for you in a few short words? Uh, Game one, Abyss Dweller, Appaloosa, Dragoon, mm -hmm. Verte. Mm -hmm. Game two, I go first. Pot of Desires. Okay, cool. Revolt. Yeah. Pot of Desires. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. Effect Veiler. Oh no. Karis. Ah. Is this just like turn by turn you're drawing these? No, 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 no. That was my opening hand. Oh. I went Pot of Desires, Banished Hand, Ash. Oh boy. That's less than stellar. And I'm just staring at my hand like... How do I play? I was like, well... Um... I literally went, set the revolt, set the, set the other pot of desires. Big oof. Set the, um, Karis, pass. Big oof. What else should, what else could I have done there? Yeah, there's not a whole lot to do there. He makes access code goes for, he makes access code goes for game. Yeah. Uh, so you lose round three? Yeah. Gotcha. Pretty handedly. Um, round three, I played against a, lot, a very, very much newer player. He had only been playing for a few months. He was playing Cyber Dragons. Uh, he was an extremely nice individual. Uh, so uh, the game was about 15 minutes long. And uh, there's not really a whole lot else to it. 
he had a pretty solid grasp on what he was doing for somebody that had only been playing for three months, and it was his first tournament. So that's good to hear. Yeah, I told him I was like, I hope you stick around in the game. I mean, he he understood the game a heck of a lot better than I did when I was three months in. So yeah. Um, round four, I played against Phantom Knight. Um, this game also did not go very long. At this point, I was two one, and he was a very nice individual. We did a lot of trading after the tournament and stuff. He, it, I want to say the game didn't last very long because I literally just opened the nuts. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I just opened. I won the die roll, went first, and just opened. I mean, just just sickeningly well both games, mm. like. Two hand traps, two starters, and cross out. Good. Like, yeah. It, it was honestly insane. Uh, game two, I saw the one of Lancia that I side in for cross out. I saw I had, like, Lancia, and I want to say another card in my hand. And it's just like, it just, I nibbed him. It just, I ended that dude's whole career. I'm, I'm sorry, whoever that is. Uh, it was, that was rough. But, yeah, we take those. So, round four, how did it go? Well. I win the die roll. Yeah. I open uh, Turquoise Warbler, Foolish Burial. Basically Fractal. That's awesome. It is pretty much just Fractal. It's slightly worse than Fractal because I don't have the extra tri- uh, the tri extra B- yeah the extra BBW in Grave. Beast, Beast Warrior, Winged Beast. Anyway, continuing. So I didn't have so it didn't have the extra body. It came up, Sunny, not having that extra tri type, came up. I mean, yes. Here's what can. happened. Because I also had Nerval on it. I'm like, cool, I have a normal summon. Great. Activate Foolish Burial. It's good. Special, special. Activate Effect of Search. Ash. Oh. That's oh. tough. Okay. Make the Assemble Nightingale. Activate Effect to Search. Effect Bailer. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'm in danger. That was it. That was all my gas. Gone. I was like, yeah, wait a minute. Bad. I was like, wait a minute. I have an idea. Activate Pot Desires. Let's go through. I get a uh, Karis. Sweet. I can make plays now. Pitch Nerval, special Karis. Right. Great. Search. I think I searched like a Fractal. <laughs> Sweet. Activate Effect. Imperm. Oh my goodness. This dude. <sighs> Link two into Ferrisheet effect Ferrisheet special fractal. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Activate fractal. Activate fractal. Second imperm. He shotgun to Lancia then. On fractal summon. What? I'm like, why didn't you Lancia to begin with? And he goes, I didn't think you would keep going at this point. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. What did you? What was the deck? What were you playing against? I don't know. I lost that game. But I couldn't remember why. I was too tilted, right? Yeah. Game two starts. And I once again brick because I drew... This time I drew all three Pot of Desires back to back to back. That's tough. And then I drew Imperm Valor. That's tough. And I was like, okay. Neither one of us get to play this game. Pass. Stop his board. I use up everything in my hand. Right. Two cards I could use. I did activate the desires, but I got, like, Ash Ash. Yeah, just nothing you can actually use. Yeah, whatever. Stop his board. My turn. I draw another Effect Veiler. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> I search through my Banish pile. I'm like, okay. Doing some math, man. I'm like, okay, I can still Desires here and possibly get an out. Right. Activate Desires. Ash. <clears throat> Good game. Yeah, yeah. I've had games like that. I remember that last tournament we did. I went... I mean, I literally, I was bricking all day. Nothing was working. I had to go home and reconstruct my deck from the ground. It was terrible. Which, by the way, I did because I ended up get because I ended up uh, while we were there buying a box of Synchro Storm and pulling like and not pulling, but from the pulls and then just kind of doing trading stuff throughout the day. I was able to get everything I need for right. the upgrade for Tri Brigade <laughs> Literalisk 2.0. Yes, it is busted, stupid. Yeah, anyway, it's really good. Um, uh, let me do my round five. Yeah, go ahead. My opponent didn't show up. Oh, nice. That was my round five. Uh, the, there was a guy sitting next to me, so we just kind of duel, who also didn't show up, so we just kind of duel for fun. Oh, 
That that's what that duel was. Okay, that duel that you duelled against that guy—that yeah. was my round four opponent. Okay, cool. Super cool dude. Yeah, he was really nice. Oh yeah. Um, cool, really cool. PK fire build, standard PK fire. It's whatever. Yeah. Um, round five, I played against Earth Machine. Ooh, this was actually a really interesting game. Uh, round one, he did a whole bunch of stuff, and his end board was in like one or two cards in hand, an anger knuckle a set spell trap and he had a mocking fortress on board i was like okay uh read an english translation of the mocking fortress because it was foreign it's like okay i can do this this works went ahead i started playing out he didn't actually have any hand traps or interruptions really (coughs) and uh, that sounds sure i banished yeah he when i saw when i activated the effect of my tri beast on field he shotgunned the Machina Overdrive, popped his own Machina Fortress, summoned a Citadel, and I said, okay, so on the summon of Shurag, Shurag Chain Link 1, uh, and I think I had a Nerval or something that was triggering right there. I don't exactly remember the circumstance, yeah. but I sure I got banished his Machina Citadel that he summoned, and he was like, oh, okay. And then I just went up into an access code line and yeah. <laughs> access code Shurag popped, the right, popped his last, <laughs> popped his anger knuckle and we went on to game two. Yep. Uh, game two came Access rolled around. Heck of a card. Yeah. Game two, he went first. I drolled him. I I don't really have much else to say. I we went in, we went through. I I had solemn strike. I solemn struck one of his his inherent summon of Mike in a fortress. It is what it is. Yeah, I cut one of my strikes inside deck, so, and I left one strike in, and then he just. Couldn't really. It is what it is, man. Yeah, he tried. He summoned Mike in a fortress. I saw him strike, and he was like, "Ah!" And he just picked it up. So, I just had a thought. What you got? You just mentioned X code. I was like, "Wait a minute! I can stupidly easy in Lyrilisk make a Boral Sword." Yeah, with two cards in hand. Yeah, and then also without using my normal summon, summon my normal yeah. summon to get another monster out for it to use its double attack ability. I'm like, that's. Kind of dumb. Yeah, it's good. It's a good, I, good deck. I should probably, if I, whenever I do eventually switch over to pure Lyralisk, uh, you know, whenever the ban list absolutely destroys Tri Brigade, if that ever happens, um, just make remember to have Boral Sword. If they don't ban anything from the Tri Brigade strategy, um, I think that'll just be the de- best deck going forward. If they, well, it'll you Lyralisk Tri Brigade will be the best version of it if they don't outright ban anything from the strategy. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> So, round six, I play against Dylan from Team Dark Arm Dealing, so you should check out. Their link will be in the cool description dude. below. Now, I play against Dylan. He is 4 one at this point, because he just got a draw in round five. So, he was undefeated. Uh, I was 4-1 and one at this point. Uh, we play out game one. He basically FTKs me. I have just simply no shot of breaking his Kaliga Crystal Wing yeah. Chuche board. It's just too much. Uh, one effect you're allowed to activate, and then the one effect they can, it, it, that one they effect can better... negate with Crystal Wing. If it's a monster effect. Yeah. Well, but... no, no, no. Well, yeah, you're only allowed one monster effect, and then even if you just like normal summon and try to attack over the Kaliga with Fractal, which I had, you just pop it. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They uh, pop oh, with yeah. Chuche. So. Yeah, no, like it's one of those things where you better have the uh, imperm, and you better have an imperm to negate the Kaliga or Dark Ruler no more. Right. So, it's it's a good deck. Uh, game two. I remember what that one I forgot was. It was Virtual World. Oh yeah. And I always remember that just then, because Dark Ruler no more. I yeah. Dark Ruler no more his board, but still couldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Game two. There was I beat him. Uh. Games two and three. But game two there was a really funny moment that I want to say. <laughs> He sided. He he has. He was running two crossouts, and he was running two ash in the main. He sided one out in side decking and left one in for crossout. Mm-hmm. And we're in like turn seven or eight. He has comboed some, so his deck only has like twenty five cards in it. He desires banish ten for cross on desires. He's got one card in hand, one card set. That's it. Mm-hmm. Ash's desires. And he went he, to cross out. No, he searches his graveyard, searches his banished pile, looks in his hand, 
activates cross out his one of ash is still in the deck surprising very he was very surprised too we were all everybody watching everybody everybody was surprised so just yo yeah so very fun very fun uh very fun game uh how did your last round go or did you play that that was one where i just where my opponent didn't show up oh okay well so i end at five one you end at two three one yeah yeah but one of my wins doesn't count yeah so i end at five one i'm i get fourth after swiss out of a field of 43 players um i got 26 <laughs> yeah i end up fourth which is awesome i was fourth dylan was fifth cam another team dark room dealings player was sixth another so, really super cool dude yeah for us to get three of the top eight was really cool so we go to play out top eight they do deck checks before top eight and i learned something very interesting that every listener of this podcast learn from my mistake I have a very large deck box. I have um I have a gem accessories deck box. I'll just say that. That's you know, one of the big ones, like the Kraken or the Bahamut or whatever. Yeah. So I have a gem accessories deck box. And in this deck box they have a very large pouch to the left with a divider. And it's big enough to hold my entire double-sleeved main side and extra. By itself. Plus tokens, plus field center, everything. Everything you could ever need. (coughs) And then there's a second pouch to the right that is a little bit smaller. And then there's a little thing that drops down. It's a little dice container. Yeah, really cool. Well, the second storage pouch to the side, I use to keep cards that... I just pick up throughout the day. I'm not running extra spare sleeves for my deck, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, what I also was keeping in there were cards that I cut in deck building. And just didn't feel like throwing into your... Right. I didn't want to put them in my my bulk tin. I didn't want to put them in my binder because I don't want to lose them. I don't want to keep track of them because it's like... My third copy of Effect Veiler, because I'm only maining two. Your third copy of Ash Blossom. Because I'm only maining two. Your second and third copy of a card that, you, that at one point you were in three of and decided to cut down to one. Extra stuff. Yes. I, my Gamma package that I cut, because I felt like I didn't need it, because I have crossouts. My Ghost Spells that I cut, because I felt like were not necessary or particularly good this format. Mm-hmm. I cut all of that, and I just put it in my little side pouch in deck building and didn't think about it. That is extremely illegal. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes. You should not have any cards in your deck box that are not actually part of your main side or extra deck. Especially not in the same sleeves and over sleeves as your main deck. Yep. The only It is a super egregious error on my part that I did not even know was a rule, but now that it's been told to me makes a ton of sense. Like the only, like the only extra cards you're allowed in there are tokens because they're tokens and non Yu-Gi-Oh cards because you're probably using them as tokens or field center, whatever, whatever. Those are fine because they're obviously not part of the game. Yes. But... But also cards that have token written on them in Sharpie. That's an exception. Also, maybe okay i wouldn't even risk it to be honest yeah because to be honest if they if you write token across it on just the art it's still playable as the original card that yeah it is. yeah no you'd have to write token like in the text field with all the effect yeah just across yeah but just don't even do that just don't have anything in your deck box that's not your main side extra or like tokens or field center or whatever the official tokens the gray cards yeah i just don't take any don't take any chances with this because what it did was i got a game loss going into top cut so i automatically start out top cut oh and one and we start out in game two at least i get to choose who goes first and there's no siding so basically it's like i auto win the die roll but then my opponent only has to win one game Mm -hmm. and i open solid and i go combo but then my opponent just I make a single mistake, my opponent takes advantage of the game state, and they just win. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, top cuts over for me in about eight minutes. Mm -hmm. So, rough. learn from my mistake. Do not do that. 
and be sure to only keep things that you need for that deck and that tournament in your deck box. So that's where I'll leave that. Yeah. Um. That being said, Dylan, a uh, good friend of the podcast, we've talked about before, he's been on the podcast, blah, blah, he, blah. My opponent in the last round and my opponent in Top Cut. Yeah. And uh, friend of team and a member of Team Dark Room yep. Dealings. Uh, end up getting second place overall. Super Huge. cool. Super cool. Proud of him. Yeah, Wonderful. I very happy for Dylan. Shout outs to him. So, and also actually shout outs to Mason who won the whole tournament. <laughs> yep. He ha- is a friend of the podcast. He was been on, he was our first guest on the podcast. So mm-hmm. thank you to him. <clears throat> um, I think that'll about wrap us up for all of that. The last thing we have to cover really quick is our podcast question of the day. Woo. Oh, wait, the buy-in. I pulled to destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Immediately sold 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 that mo- <coughs> sold that mug off for one twenty five. Woo! Let's go. Cannot argue with that. <coughs> so last podcast yeah. question that I got right there. Yeah. Woo! Last podcast <coughs> question of the day is: Last time we did, what is your least favorite card? Now, what is your <coughs> most favorite card? We already did most favorite card. That is what I'm reading the answers to. Oh, right, right. From last Stupid. episode. So, Red Eyes Black Dragon, Neospatian Grand Mole, Terror King Salmon, which is <coughs> hilarious. <coughs> um, got some of that Sam, that Terror King Salmon propaganda. Right. Um, <coughs> Metamorphosis, very cool. Uh, he said they were so such a fan they even think about getting the uh, art tattooed on their arm. Very hey, cool. I think that'd be a cool tattoo. Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Classic. A Legendary Ocean. Very cool. Chang Hole, very funny. <laughs> Dryden, best girl, huge fan there. Uh, Vampire Fraulein, you know who you are. You know what you were thinking of. It's not okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got several people that uh, answered in like a classic and modern. Uh, so this person said their classic is Valkyria and the Magna Warrior because it's like. Looks like Gundam and it looks like a Gundam and stuff. It is super cool. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the sword though. It's kind of dinky compared to the rest <laughs> of them. I know it's supposed to be a gladius, but come on. Upgrade to an arming sword, dude. <laughs> but come on, he says. Uh the next one is their modern is the arrival at Ignister. So super cool card. Yep. Uh <clears throat> somebody said that their brother said silent magician. That's awesome. Uh Dark Magician, Love Dark Magician some Girl. Magician. So mm-hmm. uh, not Silent Magician, Silent uh Swordsman. Yep. Or Silent Magician. Well, they said Silent Magician. I know. Love so. me some Silent Swords, gotcha. Swordsman, though. Uh, we have one that had a bunch, just a list. Dark Magician, Dark Magician Girl, Harpy Lady, Karibo. So that's somebody that hasn't played in a long time, but, you know, yeah. and remembers Has those. Fun memories. Right. Um, here is a Chaos Emperor Dragon, specifically the Ultimate Rare that they pulled. Very, very cool. Um, Relinquished or Karibo <laughs> for nostalgia's sake. Fair. Had someone that said Dandelion. Ooh. And they insist that it's the best card ever printed, which I don't know about all that, but that's, that's arguable. Good. Um, some of the Twitter replies: Soul Eating Over After, uh, More Silent Magician, Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon, uh, either Cyber Slash Harpy Lady or Harpy's Feather Duster. Uh, we have Harpy Channeler. We have Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon. Cool. Yep. Uh, Grand Maju, Scrap Raptor, Zombie Master, or Ill Blood. That's some very cool picks. Mm-hmm. That's very classic. Master of Dark Law or Thunder Dragon Colossus. Somebody stuck in 2019. I see you. <laughs> uh, Arm Dragon Thunder level 10. We have Ritual Beast Tamer Lara. Oh, uh, that's a cool. That's a cool. Pick. Yeah, and they sent a picture. It's beautiful. It really is. Fairy Tale Luna, Ojama <laughs> King, Blue Eyes White Dragon. <laughs> Someone said new favorite boy and commented the rescue cat uh, alt art alt yeah. art picture, Unchamed Abomination, Battery Man Double A. There are a lot of great, great, great responses to this. Um, a lot of great responses to this oh, yeah, question. Yeah. So, okay, no, like, like, listen, man. Whatever I said, in my favorite card last time. It's now the new alt art rescue cat. I, I just can't help it. It's so cute. I want to bet it. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. <clears throat> That's my comment on it. Yeah. So I think that'll wrap us up for today's episode. Sorry, this one went a little bit longer than we anticipated, but it'll be all right. Yeah, it's so. cool. It's whatevs. 
Thank you, everybody, so much for listening to today's episode of the podcast. Again, please check out ETB Games. Their link is in the description. Oh, I didn't even ask what this week's podcast question of the day is. This week's podcast question of the day is, what deck do you know is bad, but you love it anyway? You know you do. You know, uh, for me, it's Skull Servants. Yeah, that deck is awesome. I... My deck is, ooh, man. Better, better watch out. I'm a norm, I'm a OTK you on a normal summon. Yeah, yeah. It has some chaos energy, too. Oddly enough. So, I am a huge fan of the Dark Magician deck. I know, I know. It's not very great yet, yet. But Konami's determined to make it great, so we're going to go I with it. I know. They, they want, uh, I think they want another Dark Magician, I think they want a Dark Magician world top because there's a Blue Eyes world top. Yeah, probably. So, be sure to check us out on Patreon. Check out that new tier if you're interested in that. Be sure to check out our Discord server. We have a ton of great interaction there. We've got like well over 100 people at this point. Uh, it's growing by leaps and bounds. And thank you everybody for joining that already has. Be sure to leave a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts to help us with our both our analytics and help us with the algorithm over there. That way we get recommended for more people. We get to the podcast chop charts. We get everywhere we, we can get more visibility please be sure to check out our twitter at top cut podcast where you get our instant reactions and a lot of our interaction with other creators and other people in the community be sure to check out team dark arm dealings they have deck profiles for these tournaments that we go to they are a great group please be sure to check out their youtube channel in the description and then, and lastly but not least